the sound so warm and lush and amazing like honey oozing out of your speakers. <laughs> This is so inaccurate because like there's so much to this. There's so many variables, you know, like one sounds brighter. That's the only thing I could say. One sounds brighter. One sounds like it has a little more low end. Like, and you can mix it in that way. Like there's no variable that stays the same. Like the way you mix it can change it. The way you hear it can change it. Like you could purposely make it shittier. Like there's like so many variables. So I guess people thought it was a analog modeling sound that you just can't get from digital plugins because it does sound so warm and lush and amazing like honey oozing out of your speech. Speakers. It just sounds like A has a little more low end. That's like the main difference I noticed. Keep thinking about the Grand Canyon. Yeah, this is fucking Dr. Roxel music, dude. But wait, what mix was B? <gasps> oh, so A was analog modeling. So it turns out that what people were expecting to hear from tape emulation and Neve style EQ was actually just found in a cramping old stock plugin called re-eq and what they were expecting to hear in the sound of an 1176 was actually found in my free compressor plug i'm over this debate too i'm just trying to understand it though <laughs> the difference is so minuscule that it's just like dude people like, the only thing that really matters is like the how good the song is you know like it, that's gonna make a 40 percent difference while you know what plug is used might make like a zero to five percent difference right is it reasonable to expect to hear any real difference once it's played and streamed through the youtube codec does it really matter though because it's going to be played through that anyways or it's going to be played through some codec on the internet anyways so the fact that we're listening to it right now doesn't really matter because it's probably gonna be listened to that way just make good music that's what i'm saying like that matters way more this is just like you're you're arguing for crumbs basically you know it, even if it did make a difference like it's so small The difference is so like it don't matter man what plugins did he use though i didn't i didn't really watch the full other video that's why like hardcore no amount of mixing is gonna fix it yeah it's just gonna be bad <laughs> regardless i'm just kidding I'm just kidding I'm just kidding did you hear those mixes differently now that you know which are which so there was a statistic yeah it doesn't prove anything to me like i don't know it's too it's too shotgunny you know what i mean you're like you're just like shooting a shotgun into a room and being like look i hit something or look i didn't hit something it doesn't really do anything you know significant trend in incorrectly identifying the analog modeling mix however that's just the first question there was also the question of which one people preferred and that might be a different answer it's conceivable you might be able to identify which one was the analog mix but you prefer the digital mix instead so here the stats were are these vintage plugins a scam i wouldn't say they're a scam but i would say they're not as uh they're overhyped maybe I think that's a better way to put it a bit differently you'd be forgiven for thinking that there's a slight tendency towards preferring mix b it looks that way on the pie chart however that's not exactly how statistics work when we calculate the p value we get around 0 0.58 that means that this result was not statistically significant and it could have just been the product of random chance. Yeah. So this Well, not even just that, the whole question. the whole idea of testing it this way is like a product of random chance, I feel like. Is actually a wash. He brought up the pie charts. People didn't really prefer one or the other in a statistically meaningful way. So what have we learned here? Firstly, people can I guess what drives me crazy about these videos is he brings out like fucking statistics and shit like that, but then the methods are so unscientific. You have to have an extremely scientific method if you're going to be bringing out fucking pie charts and data. Unless it's just, it's just, I don't know. It's pointless. It's just dumb. You can hear a difference between the analog modeling plugins and the non modeling plugins. However, their expectations of what that should sound like don't seem to align with the reality of the sound produced by the analog modeling. Yeah, it's definitely overhyped plugins and secondly there's no real trend of what one people prefer so when people say analog modeling plugins sound so great they're so open and clear and pristine detail transparent rich okay, i don't know who the fuck is saying that like warmth is usually not rich let's say kind of those are at odds with each other vibey vintage authentic all of these adjectives that the plugin manufacturers have currently on their websites whatever sound that actually ends up resulting in there doesn't seem to be any evidence at least not that i've seen to support the idea that people actually prefer whatever that is so what we've done here is to perform a study 514 participants is a good sample size and just because we did it i think i think this would be a lot better if you did it with a bunch of mixes and on the problem is just there's no scientific way to make sure they're mixed the same but only, the only difference is like the analog 
in this, you know? On YouTube, it doesn't make the research any less valuable. So I thought anytime I do something like this, why not turn it into a formal study? So that's exactly what I've done. And you can download the study as a PDF from my website. So sure, this hasn't gone through the standard academic peer review process. However, you can freely download oh the God, study. Dude. You can- Dude, this is, this is so jokes. Like, he just said formal study. If you didn't see my three-part video series, The Compressor Scam, check that out. The oh second one God. is the most- what, what scam do you guys think is next, guys? The Compressor Scam. He did the EQ scam already. Was there another one? Maybe like the Limiter Scam? I don't know where he's- Where's he going to go from here? Like, what is going to be the sequel? I can't imagine where we're going from here. He's a bush dodger. What does that mean? That sounds bad. Um, is this a professor from the BWB University? Yes. No, this guy's way better than BWB. Come on, let's not do this to this guy. 